I'm going to talk to you in this video about how to deal with people with distorted perceptions. Now, this is super important because in all my videos and in my classes and in my 10 principles, I tell people, you know, to um, know your own truth, to state your own truth, to speak the truth in love. We talk about respecting the fact that other people have a right to their truth and to their opinions. And when you're working on disagreements and relationships and you're working on making your relationships better, we seek to understand the other person, to understand where the person is coming from, help the person to understand where we're coming from, come to a place where we have gen general or mutual understanding between the two of us. But a lot of us deal with really dysfunctional people that actually have distorted perceptions. You know, and I make this statement to women and men that are in abusive relationships that you learn to invalidate yourself and you have to get to the point where you know that what you feel, what you think, what you believe, what you perceive is true for you. So now what do we do when we have somebody who is irrational and, ir and unreasonable? How do you handle that? Now, let me give you some examples. If a narcissist accuses you of thinking that you want him to kill your child because you ask that narcissist, who could be a family member, to put your child in a car seat when taking your car child in the car with him. What do you do? What do you do when the person is in front of you is intoxicated and screaming wild accusations and accusing you of being the reason for the drinking problem? What do you do when your spouse is absolutely convinced that you went back to your hometown to cheat on him or her with your boyfriend or girlfriend from high school because you went back to your hometown to take care of your mother who has cancer and literally is wanting to hand you divorce papers over that? What do you do? There's no truth to it, no reasonable, reasonable, logical thinking that has that goes into that or any truth in it. What do you do? What do you do if your father accuses you of abandoning the family because you are moving out of town with your spouse for a job change? But your father takes that as so much of a threat that he is convinced that you're abandoning the family and he threatens to cut you off. These are irrational, unreasonable beliefs. They are unreasonable and irrational perceptions of the situation. So you can't really give any credence to them. You can't really believe them. You can't argue with them, you can't counter them, you can't convince the other person that they are not true, so how do you respond? Do we still believe that each person is entitled to their own opinion and their own perceptions? Yes and no. On the one hand, you'll have to say, oh my gosh, if that is really that person's perception, that must be really hard to believe that. On the other hand, if that is that person's perception and as crazy as it sounds and as irrational as it seems to you, if it really is that person's perception that that is what you're dealing with. And you have to recognize, I'm dealing with somebody that has very distorted perceptions. I can't change that person. I can't make that person see reality. I can't argue with that person to a place of reason. So, and I can't give in to irrational reasoning and run my life like that. So we're, you're going to have to make a decision to let go and to recognize that you're dealing with somebody who isn't reasonable. If you argue with somebody who is irrational and unreasonable, you are going to become irrational and unreasonable yourself. Trust me, I have tried it. It does not work out well. Here are some scriptures that talk about that. Proverbs 26, 4 tells you, do not answer a fool according to his folly or you will be just like him. I don't want to be ir uh, irrational and unreasonable. 
I don't, I don't want to go to that place. I don't want to have arguments that get to that level. Ecclesiastes 7.7 7 says, extortion turns a wise person into a fool and a bribe corrupts the heart. Now, why did I pull that scripture out? Because extortion has a little bit to do with like somebody who's coming to you with some crazy demands and asking you to kind of come down to their level and be at that level when you're discussing with they're throwing this crazy accusation at you and you don't want to go down to that level. The next one, Ecclesiastes 7, 8 through 9, and this is my favorite of these, says the end of a matter is better than the beginning and patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit for anger resides in the laps of fools. So if you are provoked in your spirit because somebody is throwing this crazy accusation at you, then you are going to end up angry and crazy and you're going to end up arguing with a fool. You cannot convince somebody who has irrational thinking to be rational. You don't have that power. It might make you feel a little crazy yourself to be even talking to somebody and hearing that type of thing. That's where detaching with love comes in and recognizing. Might care for this person. This might be my father. This might be my spouse. This might be a child. It might be a friend. It could be anybody that's really close to me could be a parent. If this person thinks that way, I can't control it. I can't take responsibility for it. I can't change this person. I've got to decide that I need to live my own life according to my own convictions and my own beliefs. And then I can make decisions for myself without having to get down on that person's level. So dealing with people with distorted perceptions, you have to allow them to continue to believe what that person believes, recognizing you cannot force them to fix their perception and make it align with reality. So thank you for watching this video. I hope no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what relationship you have that you recognize that all of my videos are helpful for people in any dysfunctional, difficult relationship. And my newest book is a 365 day devotional that is for Christians in difficult relationships. It's called Change My Relationship. It looks like this. And I hope you will go and look for it because it'll be daily readings every single day that will give you something like I just gave you today. So I've been getting awesome reviews from people and letting me know that it's really helped them. So, okay, God bless. And I hope to, to uh, have you watch more of my videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.